There we go. All right. That thing's totally gonna break soon, but it's okay. All right, everybody, welcome to the show. It's going to be fantastic. We're all going to have an excellent time. And boom, just like that, let's do it. Don't don't ever expect Josh to be on time if it's a live show. It's not going to happen. I'm not, I'm not going to be there and be ready, even though I've been home all day and prepping canvases and doing all sorts of stuff. I'm not ready to go. So... While I'm getting ready and getting everything all set up over here, you gotta tell me what's your, <laughs> where you're watching from, what's your favorite sandwiches? And it won't take but a second. I'm gonna just get set up over here. So, where are you watching from, from around the world? Let me know. And I'll tell you what we've done so far so you can get your canvas ready, right? We're taking black gesso and put it along the whole bottom of the canvas and left the top nice and white. Everything's all dry and ready to go. And now we're going to put on our undercolors and our liquid clear and our liquid white and all that stuff once I finally get set up where I need to be. There we go. I love these paper, these Viva paper towels. They stick to each other. They're excellent. Love them. I wish it was a paid advertisement, but it's not. I just like the paper towels. I just like them. And that's what I use. All right, let's get some tape and these down. Where's my tape? Guys, what the hell's over here? <laughs> see? See that? Like this. And we'll be all ready. So, we're first going to take our canvas and cover the top in liquid, uh, excuse me, cover the bottom in liquid clear first. And then we're going to use the top in liquid white. So, if you want to get that going on your canvas, then I'll get caught up to you and we'll be all ready to paint. And it's going to be a good time, everybody. So, what have you guys been doing all week? I'm never, just never ready. I'm so sorry. Just fast forward through all this stuff when you go back to rewatch the video. Speaking of which, we're also streaming on TikTok, Facebook, and YouTube. So any place that you want to go back and watch, you'll be able to see this video and learn how to paint this painting anywhere that you watch. So I'm going to get one more piece of tape over here. You know how hard it is to get tape out when you don't have, or when you have gloves on, and you bite your fingernails, so you don't have any fingernails? It's very hard to do. <laughs> very hard to do. All right, here we go. That guy, all set and ready, and we'll be ready to go, my friends, my guys, gals, and painting pals. Let's do it. First things first. Let's take a drip, uh, sip of our Dr. Pepper before we get started. It's, it's ritual. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Fabulous, fabulous. All right, guys, tell me where you're watching from. Thank you for the gifts. I love you. I love you over there on TikTok. You guys are awesome. You get all dressed and ready for the show. I figured instead of being late and turning the cameras on a few minutes late and having everyone go, oh, where's Josh at? Why is he not in here? Blah, 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 blah. Just get dressed and ready for you guys. All right, let's do it. Let's go. We're going to get a little of our liquid white and our liquid clear. First things first, let's put our clear on. And that way our bottom will be all wet and ready. Just like this, you guys and gals and painting pals. That's going to be my new slogan. Guys, gals, and painting pals. Anybody can do it across the world. As long as you hang out with old paint with Josh, right? Now, this Bob Ross liquid clear is very sticky initially, right? It's very, like, it's very much like syrup. You put this stuff on your pancakes, it won't taste as good, though. I'm telling you, I may or may not have tried it on pancakes. I'm just, may or may not. I plead the fit. I'm not going to say whether or not I did or I didn't, but it's very much like pancakes, like syrup for pancakes, right? So when it goes on very thick, that's not good for us. We don't want it to be very thick. That's why we take a little bit and we stretch it all the way across with just the littlest dip into the jar. Just dip it in a little bit. And then you mush it and get it all over our canvas, right? Now we're going to take it, everything that we just put on, we're going to wipe off. Because that is too much clear. You can see how reflective it is. Look at the paper towels in the black section, right? You can see all that reflective area. That's too much clear on our canvas. Now, whether or not you're paint with Josh or Bob Ross or just barely starting out, you're gonna probably put on too much. So, take it, wipe it off, 
in one direction. Don't scrub it, right? Don't do that, but wipe off that excess paint, and that's really all we're gonna need, guys. I need to get out like one more color from our spacey paintings last night, and we should be good to go. So, as far as a sunset, we're gonna need Indian yellow, we're gonna need some crimson, we'll need our blue, black, and white, like always, and then, that's pretty much it, guys. <laughs> pretty much it. So, I'm gonna get my Indian yellow out and my cadmium yellow, because that cad yellow is just so stinking bright and pretty. You just gotta love it. And then I'm gonna get out my two brown colors as well. So, get out our, that's not off of this tube. You know how some of the tubes, they get a little kink in them, and then it'll squirt out the side? I hate that. I hate that, I hate that. So, a little of our cad yellow, a little of our crimson, a little of our Indian yellow, and then, that was the Needham crimson I'm talking about. White is a very runny paint. It's very different from our liquid clear. The liquid clear is very sticky. Liquid white is very thin. So sometimes you need more dips in your jar to get your liquid white nice and white, <laughs> right? And spread all over our canvas. We don't want to go too far into our black section either. Don't do that. Don't be like old Uncle Paint with Josh. You don't want to be like that, right? Otherwise, why are we painting on a black canvas? We need to keep that area nice and dark. Right? So we'll go up here, we get all of our colors all over the place. Bang! A little bit of our liquid white everywhere. Now, let's wash off our brushes and we'll be ready to paint, my friends. So, in order to tell if you've put on enough liquid white, you want to touch it in different places and see that you basically have the same amount of color. You want to be able to see the ridges of your fingerprint or if you wear gloves like me, you want to be able to see all the little dimples in the canvas, right? Once we can see all the little dimply bits, then we know we'll be all set and ready to go. This is going to be a fantastic little painting. You guys and gals and painting pals. All right. Boom, 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 boom. Cross our whole thing, bang, all set. Now, let's clean off the brush and then start loading it up with some color. Gotta load it up with some color. Now, since we're on a smaller, I mean, it's not a small canvas, but it's a small area of canvas that we have to cover, I'm gonna switch to a one inch brush, and that way we'll be able to not have too much paint, right? Now, when we go to load our brushes, if you're watching over on YouTube, that's gonna be the best view, by the way. We're gonna just pull down just a little bit, you see that little tiny streak? Just grabbing it with a couple hairs, not even using the whole width of the brush. More like half of the brush is filled. That's just enough to do a small little sunsetty thing like this, right? Put a little yellow out there in the sky. You want it to be a little bit darker? Maybe add a little bit more of that yellow. Be a little bit more vibrant. Okay, and then we're going to go into our Indian yellow, which is a slightly darker yellow color. And when you mix it with that liquid white that's on our canvas, it instantly goes yellow from that. It goes from this very orange look to a very yellow look when you start to lighten it with that, uh, that liquid white that's already on our canvas, which is why I like using the white on the top versus the clear across the whole thing, because the white will blend our colors for us, right? Little tiny touch of our meeting crimson, because that little crimsony color will go so far. It is, look at this, it's seriously the, the, the thinnest, most stretched out bit we can possibly get. We don't want to have too much paint on our canvas, right? Too much paint is going to be a bad deal. It'll stretch, it'll run too far, especially when we go to blend it down. It'll really start to run and grow, right? Now, let's get a little of our Bob Ross Crimson. It's a little thicker of paint, right? Cover this side, just a little touch. You have to have a blender in between our yellow and our blue section that we're going to put out here. We need a little of our Bob Ross Thalo Blue and a little of a, the Bob Ross Midnight Black. Right, we're going to come all the way in from the outside first, dumping off all the heavy color in the corner. Right? It's supposed to be darker up in that corner. So drop that heavy color and let that liquid white, let it get lighter and lighter and lighter all the way around. Right? Let me put a little bit on this side. Just a little touch. By the time we blend it all together, it's all going to come together nicely, right? But if you put too much paint up there, if you have too much paint on your canvas, then it's going to grow down too far. And I'm going to show you exactly what I'm talking about, right? When we come in here and we get 
a brush that's nice and dry, right? Nice and dry, clean brush. No paint on it at all. Right? Dry it off. Just like that. Nice, clean, dry brush. No paint anywhere on it, right? We're going to come into our lightest area first, and we're going to start to crisscross back and forth. Just picking up some paint is all. Just picking up some paint there. Now all we're going to do is start maybe with the top corner, grip it, drag a little bit of that pink down in there, right? A little bit, little bit, little bit. Let me, let me uh, zoom in, especially over on YouTube. This will be a good painting to zoom in on because it'll fill up our whole screen practically. Right, just practically the whole screen. There we go. Excellent, excellent. Now, as we're remember, if you want to watch or see up close the most or the best view, get over there to YouTube, and that's going to be your best view right now. As we come out here, we grab some of that pink, and drag it in, drag some of the yellow out, some of the pink in, back and forth and back and forth. The more we do it, the more it's going to blend those colors together. Right, and the more our pink is going to want to grow in and cover up our little yellow area, right? The more you push on it, the more it'll grow, the more it'll come down, the more everything will start to get darker and darker and darker away from that bright yellow, right? Now, depending on what you want it to look like, that's how you're gonna blend it, okay? We're gonna come out here, and we want some of that pink color to come a little bit further in on the bottom. Who knows? Maybe you don't, right? It's all up to you. I'm just showing you, you can literally do it a lot of things out here on the canvas with just the right amount of paint, the right amount of pressure and the right amount of practice for the paint with charge techniques, right? Boom! Catch that sucker like that. Now, once we come out here into our darker area, this is why we put the crimson section in between our, our colors, because that blue and the and the crimson would want to uh, sorry, the blue and the yellow would want to go green. But if we add that crimsony bit in between, it starts to kind of go grayish. The more that you toss out there and the lighter you can be. Right on our pressure, the lighter we get, the more paint that gets onto our brush also, the more it's going to spread across. So if we're just brushing it very lightly and not really trying to push the whole sky, right, we can come over and it'll just blend out and blend out and blend out. Now watch this gray, this kind of grayish purpley bit. Right? We can literally do all sorts of stuff with it. Pull it in, mush it, drag it a bit further, and you get this kind of muted sort of soft edges out to our sky. They're so cool. So cool, guys. Now, let's say I wanted to have this part a little more purpley here. So we'll grab a bit more of our crimson, dump it out onto the edge, just on top of that blue, right? Dump it out here, not really trying to make it look perfect until we go back in and then blend it all out, right? Now this guy, I want to work on that little line, just a little touch, light area going back behind underneath. And then these guys with that crimson paint, the more that we push on it, the more it's going to blend in, and it takes that blue, that lighter blue and makes it a little deeper, darker, purpley bit. All right now, how far do you want that blue, purpley sky to go? You can see we can push it. We can push it, push it, push it, push it, push it all the way across the sky if we wanted to. Or, very lightly, just have it sort of blend in. Our little differences, all these little sunset areas, lights, darks, all sorts of stuff happening out there. All right now, let's wash off our brush and start throwing in some massive clouds. I mean, not even that big. We don't have a lot of room, but you know what I mean. It'd be a big old cloud out there in the ocean. I'm gonna wash off our other brush as well. Look at how it works from all the yellow color into the crimson, into the blue, and then it turns all that purpley bit. That's what you want it to look like by the time we get done blending out our sky. And guys, I blended out about, I don't know, 700 skies, okay? So, a lot of times you're gonna need to go back to your bucket and wash off your brush. If your dark continues to grow and grow and grow, go wash your brush off, start back again, and then do it all over again. Sometimes it takes three times to blend out a sky. Literally, if you put on too much paint, it's very easy to have to go back and back and back and back and blend it and blend it. And each time, you have to do it with a clean brush because as your brush gets more paint on it, it's just gonna drag that more paint all over, right? You get to decide when it's done. And then we'll come in and we'll grab, I don't know, let's, uh, I haven't used this one in a while. Let's grab a Paint with Bram fan brush, right? Now, the Paint with Josh, the second version, the Gen 2 brushes are coming. They're gonna be black with gold lettering. Oh, they're gonna be fantastic. But as for right now, Let's get the Paint Le Bram fan brush. All right, we'll get over here and get it all full of paint. Now, you can see 
There's a lot of paint in that brush. It's sharpened it down to a very sharp little tip, right? Very sharp little action of a tip over here. And that is what exactly what we want to have. In order to keep the clouds white, you need a bit more white paint. Our white's going to instantly start to mix in with all the colors that are out here. As soon as we touch it, it starts picking up color from all sorts of places, right? You know, all these, all that bit of white is now turned to like a yellowish, weird little color. Right? Drop it out here, drop some out there. We don't need to have a whole lot of paint because we all know it really likes to grow on us, doesn't it? When we start to blend it up, it likes to grow and mix in with all of those other little things and the colors underneath it and all of the little action bits. Now, our, our goal, obviously, is to not overdo it. We don't want it to all look exactly the same. If it all looks the same, then you have a depthless cloud out there, right? Real hard strokes along the bottom. Make it nice and flat. Bang! All right, that looks so cool. Let's do one more. We'll just do one more little cloud, because everybody needs a friend, like Bob always used to say, right? Starting from way back here, coming in, up, sort of kissing the little area where the clouds might meet, leaving a space of darkness in between, even a little area of our sky color also in between there, and then maybe it just kind of floats into becoming all the same thing. Okay, we need a bit more of our paint out here. Mix this guy up over there, smush him around. Just like that, a little bit of craziness, guys. You don't want it to all be the same, Right? And we know, like I said, it's going to grow on us when we start to mix it up. So let's start mixing it. Right? These clouds are allowed to look this uh, similar or look like the same cloud. But the further that we get out, we need to start leaving bits of sky in between them. Right? So just very lightly mixing this little guy up just so softly so we don't start to overdo him. Right? Blend him up too much. Hey, a little bit out there like that. Trying to leave a little color of our sky underneath as well. All right, and then out here, the more that we mix it, with our pressure just instantly goes soft. See the difference there? Look at that crazy change. All right, take the one on the bottom, mix them up towards the one on the top. Take the one on the top, mix them down towards the one on the bottom. Each time we do it, it's going to get softer, and it's going to start to blend in with all those colors. Hey, start making these cool little clouds out into our sky, right? Now, if you've got a big old hole in your cloud right there, and you didn't put enough white paint on it, don't fill in the whole thing, right? Just take a little bit, kind of cut it in half, fill in that bottom section, and leave that other space back in there, right? They don't all have to be the same, guys. And we're not finished until we say that we're finished, right? So we go back and we can add a little bit more white. We can go mix that guy up, right? Slowly doing it, little bits at a time. You don't want to overdo it and put on too much white and have your clouds grow on forever, right? Now, because it's been a minute since we talked about Karen, and I love a good sunset sky, and so did Karen. We're going to put a gorgeous little contrail right out here, scrape up a bit of white on our knife, and just push it out, right? Now, depending on where you have it, I like to kind of push up into the paint like that, and that way it gets it right on the edge, and we can sort of deposit it as we go, dropping off little bits, right? A contrail is not a perfect thing. It's made to be sort of odd and broken. You're never really going to see a perfect one, right? A lot of times the, the, the conditions aren't, aren't there to have a perfect one. And they only last for about 15 minutes. That's really all it is. She comes in and checks on us for about 15 minutes and then floats away on to see her another day, right? Now, if you don't know who we're talking about, uh, Karen is London's mother. And she's my late mother-in-law who was taken away from us too soon by a doctor. It's very sad. I don't like to talk about it a lot. But that's why we add her into the sky as a memory and to keep her in our, our thoughts and, and on, in our hearts, really. So it's going to make me cry talking about her. But, uh, and it was just on uh, April 2nd. It was just London's mother's birthday. So if everybody could wish a happy birthday to Karen... Just right out here. She's always out there, always watching us. I'm seriously going to start to cry if I keep talking about her. So, we're going to move on. But everybody wish Karen a happy birthday. Please. Please. Okay, now we're going to get out here. As you guys are wishing her a happy birthday, I'm going to clean off this one-inch brush. And then wipe the tears out of my eyes. And then we're going to keep going. She always seems to do that to me, Karen. Every time I start thinking about her, I start crying, honestly. Serious, real emotions, folks. Real emotions on this show. We don't mess around. 
All right, now let's get a little bit of our colors for our water. Now, when I do a sunset sky, I like to kind of go back in. Maybe we can go into that little bit of our Indian yellow, a little bit of our crimson together, the Meaden crimson, not the Bob Ross crimson. A little difference in the crimsonses. All right, we'll start dropping that thing in all the way up to that black line that we'd created with our, our black gesso initially, all right, when we were setting out our horizon. All the way up there. You don't have to be perfect. Boom, 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 boom. Now we got that far away sort of orangish, reddish back ocean color, and we need it to be sort of a little triangle shape, right? That isosceles scaling, right? Triangle something or other. All, all the way from here, it's a little fatter, gets very skinny as it goes away, right? Doesn't have to be perfect. That little dip in there is purposeful. So you can make your little things back in here, right? Now, let's start to change what our water looks like. And maybe, let's go back in. Let's do a wicked awesome little eye. We'll go for our Indian yellow, just pure Indian yellow, straight down here. And we'll toss our eye, maybe right there, with a little bit of Indian yellow, sort of making a black triangle now. Right? All, we're, all we do is shapes around here, guys. This is like painting for five-year-olds. Just make shapes, a little, little oval shape into a flat little disc over there, and we'll have this awesome crashing wave come down onto this guy. Right? Now, if we can, oh, it's so dangerous to go with the phthalo green and the crimson because they mix into like this weird gray, or a, uh, if you eventually go all it, it, together, it'll go like this brown color. So, let's take the greens underneath, and we'll do a little bit of our, let's do our blue. I'm gonna go into the ultramarine and the cerulean blue for our colors, and those are both Meaden colors, okay? Meaden under colors. We'll have this really pretty little blue section to the top of the wave. And then, you know what? Underneath, we'll use that same color. Actually, let's bring it around over here. A little action, little action, little action. Not like that, right? Very cool little crashing wave. Boom, 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 boom. All we need is the under, are the under colors there. All right now, a little bit of our phthalo green underneath, around the little splashing area, over here, over there, and then I, what did I say? I was supposed to get my brown colors out, and I never did. I never did, guys. So, let's go digging. The brown is like always down at the very bottom of the paint box, because I don't use it very often. So it's way down there all the time. All right, a little bit of our brown, and I'm just using the dark sienna brown, which is the lighter color of the Bob Ross set. A lighter color of the two browns. Okay, we're going to take a nice clean brush because I don't want to get the green and the brown all intermixed together. We're going to go back here, start a little sh thing happening out there, over here. What's up, babe? Oh, my dad, my friend's here and her mom wants to meet you. Oh, can she come in? I'm, tell, I'm in the middle of a live show. She can come in, but I, I, I can't leave the screen right now. This is my living, this is what I do. But yeah, absolutely, have her come in. I wonder if that's the person that called me. That must have been the person who called. All right, guys, so now that we've got all of our undercolors laid out, placed around, we can go and set up our seascape, and all we're gonna really need to do is use our white paint. That's literally it. That's all we need, guys. So, right here, clean off our brushes. And then grab a little fan brush and be ready to go with our white paint. Right? Once we use our white and it starts interacting with all those other colors, then it's really, just really going to brighten ourselves and our whole day up. Right? I always like doing sunset skies because it's just about brightening up your day. Brighten up your day. Now here we're going to get a little fan brush just like this. And... Go right into our white, right? Come into here. A little bit of that, a little bit of this, right here, right there. And boom. Now we've got to lay out where do we want to have our brightness, right? Say we don't we didn't paint a sun in this one, so we have our bright area, maybe our brightest spot is gonna be right back underneath. We're gonna take our little mall stick or our yard stick is all it is. Just a meter long stick, right? Put our white line right out there. Just very lightly. Bang, bang, bang. Our far off little horizon line. All right, now as we go over here, we can start to drop on a bit more paint in our little longer triangle section 
Just like this. The more that you add, though, the harder it's going to be. So you've got to keep your um, keep your paint color from going too crazy. All right? You don't want it to have too much paint onto the canvas. Then it's going to get too bright, and that's not what you want to have. But that's basically it. You have this long triangle shape that kind of makes this curve down around the bottom, which just makes it look like it's closer to us as it comes towards us. Right? Now, let's get into our tropical water section with a bit of our white paint onto our brush, and we're going to come up and make a little mustache shape. Remember, the, what the heck happened right here, guys? What happened? We must have touched the, the canvas with some paint, and that shows you just how white, the, uh, how bright that white can be. It instantly lights it up, right? So let's come back here, and let's toss in a little mustache shape, just like we used to do when we were kids. A little bit of a wave that pops up and comes down just like that, right? Then we're going to come over here, we're going to come up, and then down again. Just why not? You can have multiple ones, a couple little mustaches out towards the distance. That's all you really need. Okay, now we're going to switch to a bigger brush, because we're about to cover a whole lot more area. So, we come over here, we come over there, load it up with our white, and our, our, the top of our eye has now become the line for our new wave, right? As it rolls over, we come out here and we slide it down, staying in between both those colors. And then start to rock our paint back, 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 and back. And as we do that, it starts intermixing with whatever color is underneath it. And by the time we get to our little pivot point over here, guys, which you already know, <laughs> somehow it ended up being exactly where we need to put our thing down. But once we hit our spot, which is right here and there and there, it's like a little X marks the spot, we start using that as a pivot point. And we go out and around and down, just like the center of a clock would do, right? Just Where's she? She didn't come inside. Oh. <laughs> well, I'll meet her next time, I guess. Yeah. Who's your, what's your friend's name? Rain. Who? Rain. Rain. Hi, Rain. Hi. Tell your mom to tune into YouTube. She can see me painting right now. <laughs> so, I would do the same thing. Like, uh, can I meet you before you take my kid? Yes, I would normally agree, but I'm also in the middle of doing my job. This is literally what I do for work, so... Get our white paint, come around where we at, our, our uh, pivot point. It's exactly what we were talking about, right? Taking all these little strokes. You can't just go straight across because it takes away your little stroke action, right? Our brush tells the story of what our water is doing. Why are the dogs upstairs now? Coconut, what are you doing, you crazy doggy? You crazy old doggy. What are you doing way over here, all right? Off the edge, we'll go out and around. We'll fix that part later. Well, we can do it right now. What's that color? That's cerulean blue. Out here, out there. Take it down and around. We had our crimson color up here. I always forget to do this when we're doing it. <laughs> I always forget when we're actually doing the painting to help it. There we go. Bang, 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 bang. Just taking it around the edge. That's all we're really doing. Nothing crazy. Doesn't need to be super bright. Just go right up to our horizon. And that will be perfect, guys. Now, once we've got our backwater all set up, and you can always go back in with your white, brighten up your line right in the front, and drag off of that guy very lightly, just rotating your brush, dragging, dragging, dragging. These little bits that go back there, you want to come back and soften it in and just a little touch. A little touch of softness as you start to drag it. But again, you're not just going straight across. You have to go in those same angles that we did with our brush. Otherwise, it's not gonna work exactly the same, right? Now, just like this, this is our one spot where we're going to be touching and everywhere else doesn't get to touch. But let's go in here and put in our eye of our wave just by dropping in a little white, just pure titanium white. Let it get a little bit longer, a little further over to the side. And then we're going to come back with a clean, dry brush, because I'm too lazy to clean off the other one right now. But we're going to just start making little mini circles, just mixing it in. All right, it starts to brighten up as it gets in, mixed in with that uh, Indian yellow. Just to get real bright and real bright. All right, we don't want it to get super bright. So you don't want to add too much white. You want to have a few little differences in there. And then we try to work it up to that last little shadow, same as we did back here, as we were dragging our brush and making all these little flicks go closer and closer and closer to our next little wave. We're doing the same thing with our, our one inch brush right here, just getting it so close, so close to the tip top of that next bit of color, but leaving that little darkness in between there is totally vital. You have to do it. 
And if you don't, it's going to look really weird, all right? So I'm telling you, you got to. After we get our wave in there, or the eye of our wave, excuse me, now we can see we have an eye of our wave in there. We'll go back in with our white, and we're going to crisscross. We're going to go up over the top, just start tapping it in, and then rolling over. This long, flowing wave, which does not go down to the bottom right here. It's aimed down to the corner of our canvas. Why are the dogs upstairs, guys? What are you... They, they bring the dogs up, and then they go in their room and shut the door, and now I gotta deal with the dogs. Say, come here and lay down. Come on, you old doggy. Lay down on Dad's sweater. Go ahead, go ahead. She's got, I don't know why she even came upstairs. She's got a sore foot, and it's, I'm gonna have to carry her big butt downstairs. All right, now that we've gone over, we're, we're tapping in little bits, right? Tap, 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 tap. Aiming it down towards our bottom corner, we can come up and grab onto that guy and flow it off that way. Right? Throwing it down out there, not down to here, not making this crazy, like, rotating action thing. You have to toss it. The water's being thrown. It's being thrown that way, right? So we'll come up, a little bit of our white, onto our brush. The more that you toss over the side, the longer and longer and longer little bits that go down, right? We can continue on on this guy forever. Bang, 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 bang. All the way back there. Just How far do you want to go, right? Oh, Josh just paints the same wave over and over again. Uh, check yourself before you wreck yourself, because no, we don't. <laughs> no, we don't. I'm going to come back in here, grab a little bit more. All right, just a little bit of our pure titanium white, just dropping it on so lightly that it's not picking up too much of the... Not even covering up too much of the undercolor underneath. You can still almost see through it, which is exactly what we want. All right, now this guy, I'm gonna wrap around. Boom, 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 boom. Out there, out here. Getting all these cool little colors to come down, right? Eventually, we're gonna come down, we're gonna hit in a certain spot. And that's the spot that you have to decide where your water comes down and hits onto the earth, right? Just leaving a little bit of white. The more I go down into this green and then go back up onto the top, the more it wants to change the top from a bright color to that green color, which is not making me happy. There we go. Not making me very happy, guys. And then our wave has to track along that same little line right there. All right, so it goes from down and down and down as it rolls away. Hey, now, take a bit of that white. We're going to come underneath, and eventually our wave has to hit at some point, right? It's got to come down there and smack onto the ground. So we're basically going to make a four-inch or five-inch long streak, and then do the same thing, but start a little bit lower and a little bit later, right? And then start a little bit lower and a little bit later. Obviously, as you do them all quickly, right, they're about the same thing, but they're starting a later spot and ending a bit deeper into our wave. Now, watch it in fast motion as we start whipping these guys together. All right, putting out a little piece until all of a sudden we're going to line up with our water that's come down off of our peak. Now this guy depends on where you have your thing, but treating it as our pivot point over here, right? Each place coming and landing in the same spot, you can take your brush, turn it the other way, and make a little ridge, just like that. Following along, going down the other side. How far do you want to make yours? That's how you make your wave kind of curve around like that, right? Now, here's my favorite part. Without any more paint on the brush, we can start coming in. We're going to have three pivot points. One of them is going to be right here, our first one. The next one's going to be about halfway up, and the last one's going to be almost all the way up, okay? So we started our first guy, and we start making real long streaks, almost up to the top. Now we've sort of got to move over a little bit, and we keep going, and we keep going, but each time starting from nearly the same position. And then we roll. And the more we go in, we keep moving up, Keep doing about the same length thing, but we're moving forward. And the more that we go into the wave, the more we got to start curling it up. And so we start taking it, dragging it a little bit more, a little tighter of a circle, tighter, 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 tighter of a circle as it's winding its way up in there. All right? And you don't want to have too much paint on your brush. That's for sure. Have it be real dark back inside our, our eye, the, the tube, the barrel of the wave back in there, right? We don't need to have so much paint on our brush that it comes and drags all the way up. This is our final sort of dark separator. It's the depthy part of the shadow, you know, four feet underneath the water where the light's having trouble reaching way out here, right? And 
as we go. They get flatter as they go out to the side, and then sharper as they come in, and more of an angly turn. You can drag them up into your eye just a little bit, have that darkness, but remember to keep that little line in there, right? Now, these guys, we have to extend a little bit to make them look a little bit more like they're flat, right? It's been on this angle the whole time. Now we need to sort of line it up at the flat part of the bottom of our canvas. So we start coming down, streaking it out. Each one's a little different, right? They go forever and ever and ever. How far do you want your guy to go? Now our wave is rolled up and become very flat, just like that. Boom, boom, boom. And all these little ridges and spins and turns and all these different things happen when you don't put too much paint on and you follow your lines. It's just like making a big circle all the way around and each time we do it, our circle gets tighter and tighter and tighter and tighter, and tighter all the way into the center. All right? Take these guys, do whatever you want to do with them, straighten it out, however far you want to take it. we got some really cool looking wave right here already, guys. Just already got a cool looking wave. Just already. Look at the colors in this one, man. That is neat. That is just pretty as all heck. If you ask me. Just so pretty. <laughs> so remember, guys, this one's available for sale. And you can get it if you go to paintwithjosh.etsy.com. You can nab it up and grab it up before anyone else has the chance at it, right? Falling in. Then we're going to cover over it with all of our spray and our crashing water. And the... Right now, what are we going to do after this stream? We're going to go watch our Glitter Wix pal, our painting pal and, and friend of the family and my best friend London of Glitter Wix. We're going to go watch her make the most amazingest candles you've ever done did seen. But before that, you're going to have to tell me what are the three colors that we mix up in order to create Paint With Josh plaque. The deepest, darkest of all black colors you've ever seen. It's a very purpley black mix. Now, what are those three deep, dark colors that we're going to get? What's up, bub? Uh, do you have a marker? A marker? Yeah. It's not very sharp, but it's a marker. <laughs> it's signed a lot of canvases, but it's a marker. There we go. That little line was bugging me. Ooh, drag some of that pink from back there. Up over the tip top. That looks pretty cool, guys. Leaving our little dark separators like always, right? We have to make them a little darker. A little glare on our water back here. A couple little bits, just so it's not the same. A little brighter, a little darker. All over the place, right? There you go. A little bit of, of shine out here on our water's edge. Or whatever. <laughs> whatever you want to say. Okay. That's it. Just a little bit of soft, faraway detail. Everyone's looking right here for all of our details, right? So those three deep, dark colors that we have to mix up are called Paint With Josh Plaque. And it's their, uh, sorry, blue, crimson, and black. And once we get in here, we're going to start mixing it all up into our little bit, getting it all chunky and nasty onto our brush. And then... We're going to come up underneath our wave and start tapping up underneath, up into the water, not down into the shadows, right? Catching the water like you're going to cup your honey's bum. It's got to, got to hold it. All that foam is holding up all the rest of that water. Now, as we come down, we decide where we want it to come down and hit. Remember, it can't instantly fall and crash. It's got to be thrown. It's being whipped. So imagine chucking a bucket of water. It's going to flow and then go down, right? Not just instantly going to fold over on itself. That's not how you do it. But up into the part of the wave and then into this whole dark area, just going to fill in all of our spray. We come up over the tip top of our horizon. It goes everywhere. All over. Right? We're going to fill in that whole little section down here. All with our dark plaque color. Now... The reason that you fill it in like this is so when you hit it with your white, it's got that purpley blackish mix of all that color to mix with. If you don't have that blackish mix, you're not going to have the gray shadows and all the cool stuff that happens inside your wave, right? Work it right back into that very small dark separator that goes all the way along the side. And then we get to decide what it looks like when we come back and smash on all of our white brightness, right? That's the best part, if you ask me. Now, 
Before we do the white bright bit, let's do the part of our sand down here. I've got a question to ask you, my gal, my guys and gals and painting pals. What color are we going into with our white? And then how far of a distance are we going to spread it down? Right? A little bit of yellow and a little bit of white. And then let's come back in here and let's start dumping it down just a little bit. How much of a distance in between our water and our sand are we supposed to leave? Do you know the answer? Just how much of a little gap are we supposed to leave down there? Now, we need to put less paint as we get over here, otherwise it's going to drag down and all be the same. That's not what we want. We kind of have those differences like we always talk about. So, over here, whoop, take our two inch brush, might as well toss it like that, it's easier to catch. All right, now when we come over here, I've got some questions for you. I've already, I'm going to tell you the three things we need to do in order to make it look like sand. And then you have to answer me as we go, right? So first things first, we're going to pull down with our brush. Then we're going to pull one way and the other way, or vice versa, one way and the other way. You guys have to tell me the, the answers, right? So when we pull down, do we do a very light amount of pressure or do we use a hard amount of pressure? That's the first question I want you to answer me. Light pressure or hard pressure? What are we going to do as far as pulling down? Hi, my artist life. Thanks for tuning in and watching. I really appreciate you being here. All right? What are we going to do with about our pressure? You see, as I was softening this bit out, I forgot to come down here and soften this section too. The difference when you just hit it with a brush just to make it just a little different, a little less brushy. All right? Now, I see a lot of softs and a lot of hards, so we're going to do it both ways. Let's say we came down here just very lightly, just with a little bit of light pressure, pulled it one way, kind of swiped away, and then swiped back. You guys just let me know, would you leave your sand looking like that and walk on to the next step, or do you think we should use hard pressure? Just asking the people that said light pressure, that's all. Putting you on the spot right here. This is what light pressure looks like. Should we... Hey, this painting sold. Hey now. Woo, baby. That's what I'm talking about. Hey, now who, who bought it is the question. Right now, let's come in with a little bit of hard pressure since we obviously wouldn't leave it like this. Let's bend our bristles, shoot it all the way down, right? Down, 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 down. Sometimes you gotta do it 10 or 20 times. All up to us, what we have it look like, right? Pull, 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 pull. Less pressure over here so we leave it a little darker. Uh, we don't want it to be like that, where it's just a huge drop off, but just less pressure. So you leave that little dark area down around the center. Now, here's the next question, guys. Since I asked you, I told you, you had to tell me, right? We pulled it down. Doesn't that look a whole lot more like sand now? Doesn't that look like sand? And if not, can you tell me what it does look like? Does it look like, I don't know, an Aurora Borealis or maybe a waterfall? Some sort of something that it looks like. All right, what do you guys think? Hey, Sadie girl. Hi, sweet doggy. Hi, sweet doggy. Nicole bought it. Hey, now. Hi, sweet doggy. What do you think it looks like? Maybe it looks like a waterfall. I feel you. But I told you that we need to do three things in order to make it look like sand, and we've only done one. So, uh, we pulled down with hard pressure. Now, do we have to pull away from the wave first, or do we push towards the wave first? That's my next question, guys. Do we pull away or do we go towards? Away or towards? Which way do we go as far as our directional pulls? And we're going to do it with that same hard pressure that we pulled down. We're going to pull to the side with that hard pressure. But what's the direction? We got away, 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 towards, away, away, away. All right. Let's think about this, right? Because we got a few people that have said towards. So, we've been talking about saving our dark separators. Save it, save it, save it. Get that darkness underneath. Even this guy right here that we've been working on, right? Saving that darkness. So, if, wouldn't you think that by pushing the, the wave towards, or sorry, pushing the sand towards the wave first is instantly going to blend those colors together. We won't be able to tell what's what. So, let's take it with the same pressure and pull away, turning all of those horizontal streaks, uh, excuse me, all those vertical streaks, into horizontal streaks. Now, doesn't that look a whole lot more like sand? Oh, boy, oh, boy, it sure does. It show sure do, but what's the weird thing about it? We got this, this weird darkness right there that doesn't look right, right? 
And that's when our third part of our plan comes into play. We have pulled down. We have pulled away. Now we have to sneak it back and start taking some of that same color, not adding anything. Just taking the brightness that's here and pushing it and pushing it and pushing it. Getting it closer and closer and closer to that bit of water. Trying to leave a very, very, very small little line in there like that, right? Super small little line is all you need. Now we need to go back in with a bit of our white and a bit of our yellow like we had before and come back and do that whole thing again because our brush has left dark spots in the sand when we mush that color away. We basically took the whole bit of color away when we spread it back towards the wave, right? So we did the same thing down and back away from the wave and then towards it, same thing, just softening it down, but not dragging it so hard that we're getting rid of all that color, right? You gotta have that dark stuff in there. Now we're gonna grab our last piece of white, connect ourselves onto this guy and bring our wave out onto the sand like it wraps around, next up to here. And then our, this is our one piece left that we have to soften down and we're gonna be all set and ready to go, guys. So tell me, we need to come up with a name for this painting. What would you name it? Because the buyer gets to choose the title, right? And only the buyer gets to choose the title. So if you don't put forth an, a suggestion into the comments box, then you're not going to have your chance at the buyer choosing your title, right? So we're getting close to this one being finished. And one of the last things that we're gonna do towards the end is get our liquid light out and do our watery spray, right? That's the best part. So I like to use a little Petri dish and I'm gonna show you exactly what I'm doing. I just can't do it in midair. <laughs> I have to have the table here. I'm gonna do it down on the table. I suggest you do it on the table as well. Sounds like fun. But in any case, over here, we're gonna grab up my little Petri dish, right? It's just a lid to an old liquid white jar and I put liquid white in there so I can dip brushes and stuff in there and not have to worry about contaminating my jar, right? So we got our liquid white, a little bit out there. And now we're gonna go into our big old fan brush that we were using to make all that dark spray. We gotta clean off the bits over there. Get rid of this stuff. Make sure if you're watching over on YouTube, give me a thumbs up. And if you're watching on Facebook, tap those emojis. And if you're watching over on TikTok, I don't even wanna see the amount of taps. You guys are, have been letting me down. Oh, come on, after 40 minutes? We haven't even gotten a thousand a minute? Come on, guys. That's horrible. I come up here for this. If you're not doing this while you're watching me on TikTok, then you're messing up. You're messing up. All right, now we're gonna go into our liquidy white, which is a very wet white paint, right? Super wet, super drippy. There we go, dripping off the, the brush. And it's gonna change the consistency of that thick paint into a very runny, like melty ice cream sort of a paint. But I'm gonna ask you a question. Can you just use one or the other, or do you have to mix both liquid white and titanium white together? And then we're gonna have our brush off to the side. I'm not out here like this, right? Off to the side, using just the corner and little baby taps, just like you're trying to tap at it with a chopstick or something. All right, start hitting it, hitting it, hitting it. The more we go, the more you can splash up. So you get those little sprays off the tip top. All right, now, as we come down, we're gonna wanna ride on top of the shadows, not covering them all. There's still a bit of darkness, probably about the same amount of darkness on both sides. And we're popping up into the water with our little taps. All right, once we get down here, just go crazy. You literally can go nuts and just Sometimes you gotta go load your brush up and get some more of that liquid white and back over here into the titanium white because you guys are correct. You can't just use liquid white on its own. It's too runny. All right, come over here. Start our little taps and smacks again, rotating our brush. See so if we put the brush up like that and smack it again, you get that same shape that was over here vertical off to the side. It's not just about being a robot and going beep, boop, boop, beep, boop, boop. Nope, you gotta come up here and get all crazy. Turn your brush upside down. Rotate it over that way. Get all nuts and all everywhere, because that's the point. Smashing it everywhere. We're about to go, hon. What's up? I was gonna say we need to start. Yeah, I know. We're about to go soon. Mom's gonna start her show. I told you we'd be there at 6.15. I told you that. I gotta do my job first. 
All right, now Bailey's got a, a school dance that we have to go to. So we're going to get going here in a second. But since we've done that and we mixed on all of our, smashed on all of our white bits, what have we left in between all those little pieces, guys? What have we left in between all those little bits? All right, do you know what they are? You know what we call them around here at the Paint the Josh show? What do we call those little pieces that we should leave out there in between all of our bits of brightness, right? Does anybody know? What do we call them? Dark separators, that's it, right? Now we're going to come in with our one-inch brush that we were doing our clouds with. We're going to do the same thing, but much less pressure because this liquid white really wants to grow far. So you got to be real soft and gentle with it, right? Now, it does not matter if you mix up one area a little bit more than another area because we're going to come back and do it twice, right? So... For the final time, we come back, get a little bit more of our liquid white onto the brush, back into our titanium white. You guys gotta start coming up with a title for this one. And then, I come off of here, just giving these guys a little bit more brightness. There we go. A little bit more smashies. Right, as they're falling down. And then we're gonna go across and do the exact same thing that we just did. But now, even though we're gonna smash on all the same amount of white everywhere. What are we leaving in between, guys? What have we left? What are those little things called that we've left in between all these little bits of bright? Right, what do we call them? I just said it, the term. I just told you what they were. Right, what do we say? What are those names? Dark separators, that is correct. Now we're gonna take that same brush, I just dabbed it off on a paper towel, and come back here and very lightly start to mix up in different places, sometimes not even touching everywhere. Maybe skip over here, All right? Over there, over there, it's just like doing a galaxy. Just kind of move as you're going. That's our water, right? Now the best part about doing the water that way is we come in and spray this whole heap, holy, Say, did you rip one? That's horrible. How could you do that to me, dog? Oh, isn't a dog fart just a lovely smell, isn't it? Oh my God, as I get down lower, it gets worse. Oh, oh. All right, now we're gonna go back to our little tiny fan brush. And this is about the only time that we can use our liquid white on its own, okay? Actually, you know what? Let's do our palette knife first. A little of our liquid white on the palette knife, come in here, a little of our titanium white, and then we're going to go just about a quarter inch underneath our wave again, right? Because our brush is going to help connect it for us. Underneath, underneath, underneath. Bang, just like that. A little bit of that liquid white and titanium white, and then a very light pressure as we go down. That's the one difference. Very light on our pressure coming down this way, because we don't want all that liquid white to blend in and go away, right? Just like this. Wipe it across. Boom, guys. Bring our water right down onto the top of it. And there we go. All set and ready. Okay, our liquid white on top of our little fan brush. And then we come off the side of the palette, just dropping some on. And we start to spray. We drag the brush through the palette, right? And it bends the bristles back, launches them forward. And you got to make the noises or it doesn't work. So we come out here and we go... Boom! and start throwing on all these bits. As they launch off the brush, they start covering over all the pieces of our, our squiggles, right? So it makes you have to look through your squiggles in order to get to all of those beautiful bits in our water. Dang, all these little sprays, they're on the top, they're right here, they're everywhere. It's kind of a mix of our brush and then kind of throwing the water literally at the canvas, literally. Now, if you do it up close, you're gonna have a real tight pattern. If you step back and do it a bit further away, it's gonna be more sparse of a pattern, like it hit and blew out. Just really cool. So what do we got for a title for this one? And then we're gonna go watch London's Glitterwick stream while I run my daughter and her friend to the school dance. And then I'll be back later on to do one more black hole, but just on TikTok tonight. And I'm going to make a tutorial, like a step-by-step, -step, literally every single step tutorial for that uh, black hole painting, which I'll release next Wednesday. So if you follow me on YouTube, you'll be able to see that new video and learn how to paint it. Step-by-step, -step, guys. So what are we going to come up with a title? And then I got to get rocking and rolling and get these kids over to the dance. And 
and get you guys over to London's Glitter Witch stream because that's the most fun thing. Right? Now, for our very last detail, we have to go in and add the famous Paint with Josh signature, which is the bird family way out in the sky. God, it's flying through. The white seagulls this time. Boom! All right, a little bit of that. Drop our signature in right down here. And then we'll be all set. Bang, bang, bang. Gorgeous. So remember, guys, you'll be able to go re-watch this stream over on YouTube and learn how to paint it. I can't wait to see your versions. So let me try that again. <laughs> Remember, guys, you're going to watch this stream right over there on YouTube at any moment throughout your entire life. Go back, learn how to paint this scene, and uh, send it in to me over here on Facebook. Um, it's been an absolutely stellar time teaching you this today. I'm sorry I have to run out and take my kid to the uh, school dance, but you know how it is being a parent and such. There we go. Let's see. So I'm going to say goodbye to uh, Facebook and YouTube because I know the buyer's watching over on TikTok, so... I love you guys. I can't wait to see your version. Send it into facebook.com slash official paint with Josh. And until I see you guys again next time, take care. Have the rest of a good day. And blah, blah. Just done. Get them out of here. It's over, baby. It's over,